So I decided to create a simpler guide to mediation, just to bring us up to speed. Ooh, and still have some fancy slide transitions. So mediation refers to a causal relationship somewhat more complex than the simple X predicts Y relationship. When hypothesizing and testing for mediation, a mediating variable, let's call it M, plays some role in the relationship between X and Y. Thus, what we're hypothesizing is that the relationship between X and Y is somewhat more complex than a simple direct effects from X to Y or IV to DV. More complex mediation can also take place, for example, with two mediating variables or a chain of mediating variables, but testing these more complex models of mediation is not only beyond the scope of a simple guide to mediation, there's currently not an accepted or agreed upon method still for testing these more complex types of mediation. So we're just going to keep it simple. Ooh, still fancy. So why even consider mediation? Why not just predict and test direct effects? Often the reason is because we believe that some X really does have an effect on some Y, but we want to ensure that there is not a more accurate explanation for this cause and effect relationship. For example, let's say we want to predict what causes some people to either use an umbrella or not. We may say that rain causes this effect. However, this does not explain why many people do not use an umbrella when it rains. Thus, we can explain more of the observed behavior in our sample if we include a mediator called desire to stay dry. Rain causes those who wish to remain dry to use an umbrella when it rains, and those who do not have this desire do not use an umbrella. So in this example, desire to stay dry mediates the effect rain has on using an umbrella. Without the mediator, we can only explain the behavior of those who use umbrellas in the rain, whereas with the mediator, we can also explain the behavior of those who do not use umbrellas. It is also important to note that an increase in rain will likely increase the desire to stay dry, which will in turn increase the likelihood of using an umbrella. Just as with other hypotheses, mediation suggests a cause and effect relationship between variables. However, remember from previous lessons that causation is not implied by correlation, and statistically, the IVs, DVs, and mediating variables will likely be correlated. So it is critical to develop mediation models based on theory first, then to test and support the theoretical model through statistics. To illustrate this point, consider the relationship shown. Self-efficacy mediates the effect training has on performance. In other words, training affects performance through self-efficacy. That makes sense, right? Now consider this alternative model. Performance mediates the effect training has on self-efficacy. Well, that also makes sense, and it is supported by the statistics. Now consider these other models. They also make sense in certain contexts, and they are also supported by the statistics. So which model do we choose? Well, ideally, we have a certain theory and a model in mind prior to doing the statistical tests. My advice to you is to let this a priori theory guide your model development, rather than first seeing what the statistics say, then developing a model. That would be backwards and atheoretical and non-scientific. Now there are two main types of mediation. There are actually lots of mediation models, but the two I'm going to talk to you about are first called partial mediation and second full mediation. Partial mediation predicts significant direct effects and indirect effects from X to Y. Thus, the unmediated relationship is significant as well as the X to mediator and mediator to Y relationships. In order to avoid concluding that a partially mediated effect is significant, when in fact only the three direct effects are individually significant, a significance test for mediation must be performed, usually through bootstrapping, which I'll demonstrate after introducing the homework. The other type of mediation is called full mediation. Full mediation predicts that the direct effect of X on Y will not be significant in the presence of the mediator, but that the indirect effect through the mediator will be significant. Lastly, if either the X to a mediator or the mediator to Y relationships are not significant, no mediation can be taking place. 
There are other types of mediation that are more complex than this, but I won't cover them in this simple guide to mediation. Now for the homework. Your homework is to build a model that looks somewhat like this. You have job satisfaction as the dependent variable, burnout as the mediator, and I want you to pick three stress factors from the Sohana data set. This is the Sohana composites or Sohana factors data set. And these three independent variables, these three stress factors, should have some theoretical effect on job satisfaction that is either fully or partially explained by burnout. Now, because we're using the higher order composites for burnout and job satisfaction, please do not pick satisfaction with work or satisfaction with customers or burnout from customers or burnout from management as your stress factors. Instead, pick things like lack of task control, work family conflict, ethical concerns, etc. Here is a full explanation of the homework, what you're supposed to do. Uh, bullet point one just uh, says what I just talked about shows uh, with that model. Then very importantly, before you test your hypotheses, write and support your hypotheses with causal logic. Then you can go ahead and test them for mediation in Amos using bootstrapping, which I'll show you next. And then you're going to report on those findings in a nice, concise table. Don't print out all the Amos uh, output. Don't paste all that into your assignment. Please just create a nice, concise table. And then you'll discuss your findings, uh, discuss what's interesting, what was unexpected, some insights for management, things for them to take home. All right, let's jump right into a real testing scenario. Let's say you have a model like this. I'm using the BenCare data here. We have the effect from trust and agent being mediated through overall value onto long-term loyalty. So what we're saying is the more you trust your agent, your sales agent or sales rep, the more you're going to be loyal to the company for the long term. But really, it depends on how much value you think you're getting from this company. Same idea with trust and company. Trust and company affects your long-term loyalty, but really it's mediated by the value you perceive uh, you're getting from this relationship. So how would we test whether there are mediating effects here? What we do is go to the analysis properties, go to the output tab. The first thing we want to do is check for standardized estimates and for indirect, direct, and total effects. I've never shown you these before, but this is the way you find mediation, is that through that indirect effect. The next thing you need to do, if you want a p-value for that indirect effect, is go to the bootstrap tab. We're going to perform a bootstrap. The default here is 200. I'm just gonna add a zero, make it 2,000. What that does is it performs the iterative bootstrapping 2,000 times instead of 200 times, which, uh, essentially makes more reliable estimates. We're also going to use bias corrected confidence intervals. Why? I'll explain this to you in class, but the short answer is when you bootstrap, there's a tendency to inflate certain measures. We're going to correct for that, for that inflation. Go ahead and close that, save your model, and the next thing to do is just run it. After you've run it, if you want, you can hit this up arrow and see what you have here, standardized estimates. We can see that overall value does have some strong impact on long-term loyalty, and trust and agent does have some impact, looks moderate effect on overall value, very strong effect from trust and company. Now these two, the 0.13 and the 0.17, they may or may not be significant. Let's find out. Let's go to the output, and in estimates, scalars, here's the regression weights table that we are familiar with. It looks like that trust in company, C-Trust, to loyalty for long term is actually not significant. It's a p-value of 0.1. So we have the potential here, if the indirect effect is actually significant, we have the potential for full mediation here because the direct effect is no longer significant in the presence of the mediator. But the indirect effect, if it is significant, would indicate full mediation. Now, for the other relationship, a trust to loyalty for long term. Let's see, here's a trust, loyalty for long term, and that is still significant in the presence of the mediator, which means we may have partial mediation if indeed the bootstrapped indirect estimate is significant. So let's go find that bootstrapped indirect estimate. Just maximize this. So what you have to do first is go down to matrices, actually, and go click on standardized indirect effects. 
All right, once you've done that, you can then go down here to these estimates for the bootstrap, open up the bootstrap confidence, bias corrected percentile method, and then if you go look at the two-tailed significance, it will tell you the p-values for those indirect effects. So for the indirect effect from C-trust to loyalty for long-term, that p-value is significant. Same with A-trust, loyalty for long-term. This means that our mediation is occurring. Statistically, it is significant. And we know from looking at the standardized direct effects, if I click here, and that the direct effect from C-trust to value, the mediator, is significant. From A-trust to value, it is significant. And from value to loyalty for long term, that is also significant. So if I go back to the model, all these paths are significant except this one right here, 0.13. What does that mean? That means we have full mediation occurring right here from trust and company to loyalty for long term through overall value. And we have partial mediation occurring up here because this effect from trust and agent to loyalty for long term is still significant. What does this mean conceptually? It means the, the entire amount of variance that trust and company explains in loyalty for long term is actually explained through overall value. Whereas for trust and agent, it explains some unique amount of variance in loyalty for long term that is not also explained by overall value. But we can see from the indirect effect that overall value does explain a lot of the variance that trust and agent explains in loyalty for long term. So partial mediation up top because all effects are still significant. Full mediation down below because only the indirect effect is significant. And again, that is through the bootstrap estimates down here, two-tailed significance on standardized indirect effects. We see that those two effects are significant. And that's how you test for a simple mediation model in Amos. So the last thing to do is figure out how to report this. What I would do is go to Word and create a table that looks something like this. In fact, I think I would add one more column here and call this um, comment or result or something like that. There we go, result. We know that if we go back to our model, this bottom half from trust and company is fully mediated, the top half is partially mediate, mediated. So from trust and company, here's C trust, we know that this is full mediation. Here's partial mediation. And now let's go find the evidence for that. So C trust to Loy Lung, the direct effect. If we go back to the output, go to the matrices, standardized direct effects. Right now we're on the two-tailed significance. So this is the p-value from C trust to Loy Lung. The p-value is 0.137, not significant. So if we go up to the estimates right here, we can see that the estimate for it was 0.128. Let's go put that in our table. 0 0.128, and this is not significant. Now let's go do the same thing for A trust. Here's A trust to Loy Long, 0.166. Was it significant? Let's find out. Go to the two-tailed significance, and it is significant at 0 0.018. So let's go stick that in there. Ooh, I forgot what the value was. Uh oh. 166. Okay. 0.166, and this was significant at um, less than 0.05, so just like one star here. And we can say down here, one star equals uh, p is less than 0 0.05, um, and ns equals not significant. Okay. Now for the indirect effect, let's go find that. So from C trust to Loy Long, indirectly. Here's standardized indirect effects. We're on estimates from C trust to Loy Long. It's 0.284. The other one is 0.100. So let's grab both of those. 0 0.284, 0 0.100. And we know if we go look at those p values, two tailed significance, both of those are significant at 0 0.001. I'm just going to say star, star, star here, star, star, star. I guess I better put that down here. Star, star, star equals p is less than 0. 0 0.001. Okay. And that's full and partial mediation. That's how I would report it. Nice and concise. Here's the relationship.
here's the result, and here's the evidence for those results.